Hello, welcome back to another episode of the Audio Effects series. Uh, today, we are going to be talking about the different EQs that are in Ableton, and I decided to go ahead and combine channel EQ, EQ8, and EQ3 in the same video, since they're all about the same thing. You don't need to watch the same content three different times, unless you want to. You can watch this video three times, help me out. Um, with that being said, diving right into the channel EQ, channel EQ is the most basic and uh, between this one and EQ3 they're very similar basically channel EQ basically gives you a graph of what is going on in the EQ3 so for channel EQ you have the low pump you have a kind of mid high and then this low pass filter that's going to obviously add a low pass a low pass and it's going to cut at 80 Hertz so not really ideal if you are trying to take out sub and some type of sample or in some type of bass it's not really going to work out in my opinion unless there's some way to adjust the 80 hertz this is kind of just a basic eq maybe it's good for you to have the visual but if you want the visual use the eq8 moving on eq3 same thing almost same exact thing you have a little bit more control for the frequency. So now if I wanted to add the low frequency 200 here, take that down. You can tell that it's uh, cutting out all the sub frequencies. Frequency high, same thing. Use an EQ8. EQ8, you have all these parameters. You can adjust the type of shape that this EQ is at. So for example, mine is auto set to EQ out anything over 200. If you want to do this as well, just load up EQ eight. If this is usually it would be like this, throw in the first EQ notch to a low pass filter or high pass and um, go here, save it, save it as a default or not even save it like that, but save as a default preset. That'll save it and you'll be good. It'll automatically EQ out any lows, place it on synths, bases, whatnot, just leave it off your subs. But the ability EQ8 here is that I like is one, you have a lot of control over what your notch is doing. So for example, if I want to drag it up here and there's a frequency that I really like, I can just really dial it in here. And same thing, if I really need to take away something, I could just dial in exactly what the frequency is, even if it's just a little bit and I'm being super nitpicky, or if I really need to dial it in, you can do really anything with this. The other nice thing that I like about the regular EQ is that you can one, solo out each frequency frequency. So if we solo this out, that's a helpful tool to use, but you can also EQ on not only the stereo, but left and right. And then you can do mono and stereo. So if you need to take out some of the stereo EQ for something to make room for some other synth or something along those lines, you can take it out in this. So it kind of takes that um, extra frequency out. So I would use EQ over the other two. Um, if you need the channel EQ, just to kind of get a grasp on what the EQ does and have a little bit more upfront kind of guide to working with EQing sounds, use it. I would recommend just starting off with EQ8. With all this being said, hopefully that's a brief overview and a good enough overview for you to start using this if you're not EQing. With that being said, we'll see you again next week for the fourth episode in the series. Yeah.